Hey there. In this video, we are going to look at solving systems of equations graphically and then verifying the solutions by substitution. The systems we're going to look at are linear quadratic and quadratic quadratic. To solve this system, we are going to create a hand-drawn graph of both of these functions and then see if we can identify the intersection points. We have a quadratic function here and we have a linear function. We will start with the linear function. The simplest way to graph this is to put it into slope intercept form. So move that 2x to the other side and this is going to be y equals negative 2x plus 1. That has a y-intercept of 1 and a slope of negative 2. So to graph that, if we have 1 as our y-intercept and our slope is negative 2, which means you're going down 2 over 1 and follow that pattern. We don't need to put all of these dots on here, but it uh, helps get our line in the right place. We're going to graph this parabola here. We're going to do the same thing of isolate y by moving that x squared to the other side, and we have y equals negative x squared plus 4. This is the standard y equals x squared parabola with two transformations on it. It is going to open down instead of up, and it is going to be shifted four vertically upwards. So that vertex that normally would be at 0, 0 is instead way up here. And then it's going to open downward, and it's going to have that standard pattern in the points 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. And the same, since it's symmetric, the other side, 2, 4, 3, 9, like that. And we have our graph. We'll try and draw a smooth curve through it but we can already see where our solutions are going to be. The solutions to that system are the intersection points. So that point right there and this point right there. This has two solutions. We have negative 1, 3 and we have 3, negative 5. So that's finding the solution graphically. The intersection points of the graph are the solutions to the system. They're the only points that are on both graphs, which means they're the only pairs of numbers that are going to work in both equations. To verify that, we can verify it algebraically by substitution. If we take these points one at a time and we substitute them into each equation one at a time, just to verify that they work. I am going to start with this equation. If we put negative 1 and 3, and we see if we have the same thing here on both sides, this is negative 2 plus 3, which is 1, and of course 1 is 1, that works. We need to check it in both equations, so we're going to put it in the other one as well here. So if we put that same set of values in there, negative 1 squared is 1 plus 3, and of course that works out 4 is 4. It works in both of them. So this is a correct solution to that system. We're going to check the other one. So we have to do the same thing with the other equation. Substitute that second set of values in. And we'll see if it works. So 3, negative 5, and 3, negative 5. 6 plus negative 5 is 1. That is something that works. That works in that one. And over here we have 9 plus negative 5, and that is indeed 4. So verifying those solutions can be done quickly and easily by substituting the values into both equations. You want to check both solutions in both equations because that's truly what it means to be the solution. 
Let's look at another example. Now this second example we're going to have to do a little bit more work because these equations are a little bit more complicated. For this first one here we're going to use two different methods to get the information that we need in order to create the graph on this grid over here. Method one is going to be putting it into vertex form by completing the square. So what that involves first of all is isolating y. So I'm going to need to move those things to the other side and I will have y equals negative x squared plus 6x minus 5. To complete the square I need to think about what perfect square I'm going to turn it into. First I'm going to factor out this leading coefficient here on the x squared. So factor out the negative or negative 1. This is going to be x squared minus 6x. I'm going to leave some space there and leave the 5 over there. The perfect square I'm going to turn it into, if this is x squared minus 6x, the perfect square I'm turning it into is x minus 3 all squared. That's where I'm going with this. To do that, I'm going to need to add 9 and subtract 9 to keep it the same. I can't change it, but that is going to make this perfect square here. Before I write it as that perfect square, I am going to keep in the brackets what I need in order to turn it into the perfect square and then write this 9 outside of the brackets but I gotta remember that there's a negative in front so actually minus negative 9 makes this plus 9 out here and then I have my minus 5. As I said this turns into this and of course I have this minus here and then the plus 9 and minus 5 makes plus 4. So from that I can get the information that I need which is that the vertex is at 3 to the right and 4 up. And the fact that the a value is minus 1 means that this thing opens down. It's been vertically reflected but the fact that this is a 1 means the shape is just the usual shape that we're familiar with from the basic parabola. If you're trying to graph that thing, find where 3, 4 is the vertex. It opens down, of course, and then just use the pattern in the points that you know. 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, and so on. The same on the other side. 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. And you can get the graph pretty quickly from that. And then try and draw a smooth curve through this. Not perfect, but it'll do. Now, this was the first method to get the information that we needed. The other method is using something called the vertex formula. The vertex formula just gives you the x coordinate of the vertex. It is x equals minus b over 2a. It comes from the quadratic formula. There's another video if you'd like to find out more about that. But using that, we can look at the b value and the a value and then we can find out that this is minus 6 over minus 2 which is 3. That tells me that the x coordinate of the vertex is 3 just like we found the other way here before. That gives you essentially the axis of symmetry here and then all you need to do after that to find exactly where the vertex is you substitute it into this equation to figure out what y is you would have y equals negative 3 squared plus 6 times 3 minus 5. So that's going to give you 3 squared is 9, make it negative, plus 6 times 3 is plus 18 minus 5. So you have negative 9 plus 18 is 9, minus 5 is 4, which we found the other way that way. So once you know that the vertex is 3, 4, and the a value being negative 1, once you know the vertex is there, you graph it the same way. It's just a different way to get that same information. To graph the second one here, x squared minus 2y equals 10, that one we need to rearrange and isolate y. To isolate y there, I'm going to start by moving the y term to the other side because it's negative on the left side which is going to make it positive on the right side which is nice and then the 10 has to come over here 
which is going to be minus 10. And then, of course, the x squared is there. And then the last step is dividing everything by 2. So you have y, you have minus 5, and I'm going to write this as 1 half x squared. This is a basic parabola that has two transformations done to it. It is vertically compressed by 1 half. It's all the y values are cut in half. And the vertex, instead of being at 0, 0, it's vertically shifted down by 5. So if we're going to put that on there, we're going to locate the vertex. I'll just write this again here. So we know that the vertex is down 5, so it's on that point right there. Now, instead of this being the usual shape, 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, and so on, it is going to be all half that much, the vertical value. So instead of 1, 1, it's 1, 1 half. Instead of 2, 4, it's 2, 2. Instead of 3, 9, it's 3, 4 and a half. And 4, 8, instead of 4, 16. And of course, I don't need all those things there. It's the same on the other side, creating that graph. And then we need to draw a smooth curve through that, smooth as we can. Not perfect, but it'll do. And as you can see, those two intersection points, there's one and there's the other one. So the solutions to that are, 0, negative 5, and 4, 3. Those are the solutions. The solutions to the original system are the intersection points of the two graphs. Now, we could verify these solutions the way we did in example 1, but I don't need think that we need to go and do that because it's the same process again. What we're going to use the time for instead is to solve this again by graphing, but use technology this time because that is an option. In fact, it's if you have access to technology, it's a quicker, easier option, plus it has the added bonus of if the two functions that you are working with in your system happen to intersect at points that are not integers, you'll still be able to find what the intersection points are. So let's do that now. Now I'm going to use Desmos online here to graph the two functions and find the intersection points, but there's a whole bunch of other things you could use. The nice thing about using technology is you can usually just enter it as it's written and given to you. So I don't even need to use the, the two equations after I rearrange them. I can just put them in as x squared minus 6x plus y equals negative 5. And that's my first function. And then my second one is x squared minus 2y equals 10. So there's my two parabolas, and as you can see, there's those two intersection points. On this piece of software, you can just click on them. Some things you have to click a, a button to say, find the intersection points. But all of them have essentially the same idea here. The, the concept to understand is that solving by graphing is putting both functions on the same graph and then using the graph to find the intersection points. As I said, if what you were finding the intersection points between was not such nice numbers, like if this was something different here, let's say that was a nine or something like that. Let's say this had like a 1.1 .1 in it or something like that. Then these are not gonna be such nice numbers. Technology, exactly the same thing though. Finding the intersection points, you're just doing that. Uh, by hand, that'd be pretty hard to tell that those were the intersection points. So graphing by hand and solving that way has its limitations. But it is quick sometimes if you don't have access to technology. So that is solving linear and quadratic systems by graphing.